William James was born on January 11, 1842, in New York City. William James was first interested in arts, which soon switched to scientific studies, where he attended Harvard University in 1861. He continued his studies into the medical field at Harvard Medical School. During this early adulthood, William suffered from many illnesses, interrupting his education and explorations. He suffered from many back, skin, eye, and stomach ailments, as well as psychological problems such as depression. He managed to also get through smallpox and complete his MD, though he never practiced. At age 36, he met Alice Gibbons, who he married. He then spent time in Germany, where his interest changed again. He began to study philosophy and psychology. He stated, I originally studied medicine in order to be a physiologist, but I drifted into psychology and philosophy from a sort of fatality. I never had any philosophic instruction, the first lecture on psychology I ever heard being the first I ever gave. William James became the first educator to offer a psychology course in the U.S. in 1875. In the 1880s, William James came up with the James Lang theory, independently from Carl Lang. William James believed that in order to experience emotion, an individual must first experience their bodily response first that corresponds to that emotion. For example, we experience sadness because we cry, rather than crying because we are sad. Emotion is a complex subjective experience accompanied by biological and behavioral changes. Emotion involves feeling, thinking, and activation of the nervous system physiological changes and behavioral changes such as facial expressions. Williams' research gave more attention to emotion as consequent effect of a physiological change, while Lang's theory gave more attention to emotion as the demonstration of a physiological change. However, a physiologist Walter Cannon disagreed with Williams' theory of emotion. Cannon came up with the cannon bar theory which thought that bodily responses alone could not explain emotional experiences. Cannon argues that people can experience a bodily response without an emotion, such as a racing heart from running, doesn't indicate fear. He also thought that bodily functions happens too slowly compared to emotional responses. Lastly, he believes individuals can experience different emotions from the same physiological arousal, such as a racing heartbeat and heavy breathing when running and angry. Two more theories of emotion developed after the James Lang theory were the Cannon Bard theory and the Schachter Singer theory. Walter Cannon and Philip Bard developed a theory in 1927 that was in direct opposition of the James Lang theory. They concluded that the experience of an emotion does not depend on input from the body and how it is responding. The Cannon Bard theory states that we feel emotions and experience physiological reactions such as sweating, trembling, and muscle tension simultaneously. More specifically, it is, it is suggested that emotions result when the thalamus sends a message to the brain in response to a stimulus, resulting in a physiological reaction. According to the cannon bard theory, we react to a stimulus and experience the associated emotion at the same time. For example, Have no fear. Thalamus is here. No way, you should probably be afraid right now. Thalamus, what do I do? Okay, so I'm going to need you to do several things at the same time. First, I need you to get aroused. Whoa there. No, no, no. I mean a general state of autonomic nervous system arousal. Your heart rate and blood pressure are now rising. I also need you to get afraid. So you're saying I should react physiologically so that... No. All emotions are physiologically the same. I just need you to get afraid. Hey, we're in the middle of a mugging here. Can you hurry hey, up? shut up already. We're going to be done pretty soon, okay? Next, I need you to alter your behavior. Okay. The two-factor theory of emotion was developed by Stanley Schachter and Jerome Singer in the early 1960s. This theory suggests that emotion comes from a combination of a state of arousal and a cognition that makes best sense of the situation the person is in. This simply means that when people become aroused, they look for cues as to why they feel the way they do. 
Schachner and Singer conducted an important study revolving around the two-factor theory. The participants were told they would be injected with a vitamin called suproxin and were then divided into four groups. The first three groups were all injected with adrenaline but told different side effects, and the last group, serving as a control, was injected with saline. Participants were then placed in a euphoria or anger situation. They found the misinformed group in the euphoria situation to be the happiest, and the ignorant and misinformed groups in the anger situation to be the angriest. The happiest group had no idea why their bodies felt as they did, while the angriest group had the reasoning as to why they felt the way they did. The results of this study supported the two-factor theory and showed that when an individual has no immediate explanation for the state of physiological arousal they are feeling, they will label their feelings based on the situational cues available to them. So far, we have discussed the James Lang theory, the Cannon Bard theory, and the Schachter Singer two factor theory. Now we will move on to Paul Ekman and his work with emotions and facial expressions. Paul Ekman was born in Washington, D.C. in 1934. At 14, his mother committed suicide, which is why he wanted to help people with mental disorders. At age 15, he attended the University of Chicago without even finishing high school, and then New York University, where he graduated in 1954. He received his Ph.D. in clinical psychology from Adelphi University in 1958. In 1963, he received the National Institute of Mental Health Award for his study on nonverbal behavior. When asked why he decided to focus only on facial expressions, he admitted his interest in photography. After studying different cultures, he found that there were six universal facial expressions, including anger, which has eyebrows that are lowered and closer together, eyes that are glared, and a narrowing of the lips, fear, which shows eyebrows raised and together, raised upper eyelids, tensed lower eyelids, and lips that are slightly stretched horizontally back to the ears. Disgust shows a nose that is wrinkling and the upper lip is raised. Sadness shows drooping upper eyelids, losing focus in the eyes, and slight pulling of the lower lip corners. Surprise only lasts for about one second and it shows eyebrows that are raised, eyes widened, and mouth open. Happiness with a real smile includes crow's feet and wrinkles, pushed up cheeks, and movement from the muscles around the eye. He developed the facial action coding system and the pictures of facial affect to recognize and measure emotions. His work is important to the field of psychology because it has helped many patients, such as those who have suffered from autism, understand emotion. He has also helped the FBI and CIA with his work on lie detection, for instance, with the Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky scandal. He's also done work with Pixar on facial expressions, as well as with Fox on ideas for the show Lie to Me. His work is relevant because the ability to read facial expressions is an evolutionary adaptation. Because humans are such social creatures, it is necessary to be able to tell who is good and who is bad. The ability to read faces is crucial in detecting lies and truths.